Hello, everybody. It is four o'clock on Thursday, and I am Robin Klein of Klein and Company Travel Consulting here live with you today. And we have got a fabulous, fabulous guest. We're going to share a wonderful presentation about some fabulous properties in the British Isles. And so all the Anglophiles, Harry Potter fans, <laughs> old arc aficionados, <laughs> and so forth. Oh, Outlander, we're also going to Scotland. So if mm -hmm. you're a, a Jamie and Claire uh, fan, you'll be happy today to see our property in Scotland too. And uh, before we go on, though, I do want to remind you that I also have a weekly update that comes out. You can simply go to my website that you see scrolling along the bottom there. There's a nice pop up when you arrive. Put your name and email in and I will send you weekly updates on all the good happenings that are going on. So without further ado, I want to welcome Carol Kennedy of mm -hmm. Rebecca Ray and I opted not to put her name in the box in the corner here because I want when we get to the slideshow I want you all to be able to see everything fully and completely because these pictures are just stunning and the information that Carol is going to share with us is just fabulous so I know I've said fabulous so. like three times <laughs> but uh, it is it truly is it so, is fab. yes yes so but before we get started uh, Carol tell us how you got involved with Rebecca recommends and what exactly Rebecca recommends is. Sure. Well, first of all, Rebecca recommends is a representation company and we represent only small uh, privately owned luxury boutique hotels and on sites uh, around the world. We'll talk more about that later. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Rebecca recommends um, it's based in the U S but most of our clients are outside of the US. So we are their only form of representation. We are their sole representatives for the, uh, for the uh, Canada and United States. Uh, and I got involved with Rebecca um, just through a travel advisor friend of mine who uh, had just recently met her and loved her. And she put the two of us together and it was love at first sight. And, and uh, I've been working with her now for about four and a half years. And we're an all women's team and it's so much fun. This is not work. Um, and I get to take advisors like you to all sorts of wonderful destinations around the world. And that's one of my favorite parts of the job. But before I um, met Rebecca, I was kind of a jack of all trades. I did a lot. I was in advertising for many years. And then I uh, raised some children for a few of those years. And then I was a landscape designer and a professional development person. So anyway, travel brought together my love of travel and some presentation skills. So that's great. Yeah, yeah similar. We've sort of had similar paths. It sounds yeah. like we're both a, have a little bit of a serial entrepreneurship <laughs> in our blood. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but so I love and I love that because I can yeah. identify with that. Of course, mm -hmm. I I'm on the, the travel side of helping travelers, whereas you're on the side of helping travel agents, advisors That's such right. as myself to mm -hmm. connect us with these fabulous properties that our clients might not know about otherwise. Right. So it's a great relationship. So tell us a little bit about Rebecca and our starting the starting this and the history of that. Sure, sure. So. Um, Rebecca um, recommends started 16 years ago. Uh, Rebecca actually grew up in Chester, England, and um, she grew up in the Chester Grosvenor Hotel. Her father was the general manager, and he then went on to start small luxury hotels, which some people may have heard of. Um, and then over the years, you know, she worked in every different department of the hotel. She went to hospitality school. She moved to the States because she had always loved California. Whenever her family came to the States on vacation, she's like, one day I'm going to live here. And they're like, oh, come on. <laughs> but she did. So she moved to California, but realized just how much she missed, uh, you know, the UK. And she didn't want to work in a hotel. She wanted to represent these beautiful hotels that really no one knew about. They were just these mm -hmm. hidden gems. And she said, you know, that's what I'd really like to do. So uh, she started with just a handful and she has built this company, uh, you know, to where it is today. And we have now hotels all around the world in many, many different countries and uh, on sites as well. 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, well, and we're going to have to come back another time and talk about some of the properties in some of the other countries. Absolutely. It was definitely a tough call on deciding what to highlight, but um, but I'm mm. glad we're going to go with these. So, uh, so, yeah, so why don't you go ahead and share your screen okay. here and then okay. I'll um, finagle it around so that okay. you just wait a second to start here until I get everything kind of Okay, got that. I am going to now. I'm going to disappear, but I'll still okay. be on video. And then I'm going to move this around. Oh, let me All see. right. So you are good to go. Everybody can see you and the presentation. So, okay. uh, so have at it. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. So some of you may have seen the teaser uh, that Robin sent out earlier today about the Goring Hotel in London. And I love starting with the Goring because it is the quintessential English experience hotel. And uh, you can see the front hall is, is currently decorated for the holidays and nothing, not even COVID will squelch that, you know, mm -hmm. holiday cheer at the Goring. Um, mm -hmm. It is the last family owned hotel in London. Uh, it's been uh, in the Goring family for over 110 years. And so they were open during World War I and during World War II, and they never closed. So really, COVID is the first thing that has closed this hotel for a few wow. months this year. Uh, but management is so incredible, and they have reopened, and it's more beautiful and brighter than ever before. And they certainly will get through this. Um, oh, that's right. So that is a picture of uh, Jeremy Goring, who was the great grandson of the original Goring. Um, oh, okay. It is situated right next to Buckingham Palace uh, in the beautiful neighborhood of Belgravia. So it's uh, a little quieter area of London, but certainly an easy walk to other areas, you know, for shopping and, and theater and great restaurants. Um, so that's where it is. And um, it is the only hotel in the entire world with a royal warrant from Her Majesty the Queen. And oh. um, she does have a favorite table in the dining room and she does come over from time to time. She hasn't during COVID, um, but uh, they hope to see her back again soon. And then Kate Middleton, who you see on the right, and you're wondering, what is she doing? Well, she, uh, a few years ago, we, um, they refurbished the all of the downstairs with this beautiful hand painted wallpaper. So she uh, she came back to do that, but she really um, put the Goring a bit on the map uh, back in 2011 um, when she stayed at the Goring uh, with her family for a few days before her wedding, and she left that morning in her wedding gown from the Goring and you know, photographers and news cameras uh, from around the world were documenting it. So uh, <laughs> that was really neat. I can't believe, I can't believe that's been since uh, 2011. I wow. know. <laughs> I know. Well, and then there was a more recent marriage, but we won't talk about that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have the same. It was a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, it was lovely. It was really, yes. really lovely. Yes. Um, so here is a picture of uh, one of the dining rooms at the Goring, and uh, they have a wonderful uh, chef who is also extremely handsome, and he has a Michelin star uh, kitchen and puts out just beautiful British cuisine with a very creative twist, um, just gorgeous to look at and really delicious to eat. Uh, uh, all of the rooms at the Goring are lined in Gainsborough silk which is a very special silk that you'll only find, let's say in Buckingham Palace and other palaces across uh, England. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not a family hotel. It very much yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, it is really fun. And they, um, we call them our VI little peas and um, <laughs> they are very well taken care of at the Goring Hotel. Mm, that's so wonderful. That's something to keep in mind. Um, so this is um, something I also just wanted to bring up because, you know, you may have clients who want to come over to the Goring um, and maybe they want to also explore the English countryside. But, you know, you may ask yourself, well, oh, I'm not maybe an expert in this area or I'd love some help from real experts. Uh, so that's where our client original travel UK and Ireland comes in, you know, comes into play. And uh, they're based in London, uh, but they cover all of the UK and Ireland. So let's say um, 
You had uh, clients who were interested in Scotland. They'd never been. Well, um, our clients, Original Travel UK, would certainly let them know all of the must-sees in the areas that they were going to, as well as let them in on some really special local uh, experiences that we say are very ungoogleable. You know, they are yes. original yes. and they are very, very unique. And uh, they're usually what the clients, you know, talk about most, you know, when they mm -hmm. get back home. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to the Scottish Mills or we went to see an Irish Shaughnessy or, you know, it's it's that it's that local touch, isn't it? Yes. Um, well, it is personalization yes. that can be added to a trip like this where, you know, that's just not something that you can find on TripAdvisor or, no. you know, like I said, it's ungoogleable and it all exactly. has to do with those connections and mm -hmm. how we work together to make these wonderful itineraries. So yes, so, so proceed. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And, and they can help with anything, you know, they can help just with transfers from the airport to their hotel. They can help with, um, you know, let's say you have a, you know, client who's a little nervous. Um, they can just meet them right at the gate in the, at the airport and lead them right through customs and get them right out to the car. Um, they can help with Eurostar tickets and sold out theater and concert tickets and, uh, film premieres and sporting events, of course, they do a lovely, um, they do have this wonderful itinerary that includes uh, ending at the Chelsea Flower Show. And mm -hmm. they have uh, the only um, uh, garden expert in the UK that can put together these private tours where you're actually sitting and having lunch with the Lord and Lady of this beautiful property. Um, oh you know, and, and, and being personally taken through their gardens. Um, and then Harry Potter, forget about it. They are so creative with all of their Harry Potter, uh, experiences. Um, and if you're into shopping or if you want to know where the Royal shop, they'll take you to those shops. So they're, they're clever, they're creative, and, uh, they're just a real added bonus. Um, and they love and they love what they do and they love the people that they take care of and they take exactly. care of. The, I mean, they don't really even view you as clients. I think they really view you as family. You know, they want you to just Absolutely. have the very best time. Yeah. By the end. I mean, there are hugs and well, yes. hopefully after COVID <laughs> well, there will still be hugs and kisses. But exactly. honestly, you're exactly right. They they it really is all very personal to them and they want to make sure they just want to make your client's trip the absolute best trip it can be. Um, okay. So we're going to move outside of London and we're going to look at Great Fosters. Um, so Great Fosters is actually really close to Heathrow airport. It's only about a 10 minute drive and it's also just about 20 minutes down the road from Windsor castle. So particularly people who are coming into Heathrow um, maybe they're going on to um, a cruise in Southampton. Maybe they're going on into London or or after that. But a, a nice restful day and a nice restful night at Great Fosters is a really a good idea. Uh, they are a small luxury hotel of the world property. Um, and I did mention they were just so close. Stone's throw from Windsor Castle. And they do have, obviously, cars that will take guests down. Um the hotel itself used to be the hunting lodge of King Henry VIII. And so it has a rich history, beautiful grounds, gorgeous sculpture gardens. It's surrounded by a moat. Um, and it's, um, you know, really special. Um, it has two great restaurants, one less formal, one more formal that has a Michelin star. Um, and then the rooms themselves range from very historic with tapestries on the wall and huge antiques. Like you can see King Henry VIII himself sleeping in this bed um, yeah. to, to just more. Um, they're all just super comfortable, cozy rooms with beautiful views and gorgeous amenities. It's one of my favorite properties in our portfolio, even though it's, um, you know, small, um, but it's just, it's just gorgeous. It looks um, like it. Yeah, very special. Uh, now we're going to whiz down to Cornwall, which is in the southwestern little foot of England. Uh, from London, it's about a four-hour drive or train ride. And um, Cornwall is an area of absolute natural beauty. Um, 
this is the an overview shot of the hotel you can see kind of right in the middle of the screen and oh, that yeah. is an entire private beach and that is the whole roseland peninsula and it's protected land um and there is a um there is a walking trail that goes around all of cornwall it's like 382 miles i believe of coastline oh because it goes in and out you know mm -hmm. um but it's it's an uninterrupted walking trail and it's absolutely gorgeous um but they're very lucky to you know have this wonderful location and the house itself just happens to be the most beautiful little english country house set right on the beach um so this is where this is where all of our uh Poldark fans and Rosamond yes. Pilcher Shell Seeker fans will just be in heaven. That is absolutely right. Um, and Poldar uh, Poldark as well as Doc Martin as well. Yes, if you have right. any of Doc course, Martin fans. Of course. Oh, how I, how I forget that. Yeah. Oh, or any fans of Cornish seafood. Oh my mm. goodness. You're just not prepared for how good the food is at this restaurant and they have two different uh, restaurants. There's only 37 rooms, but they have two different restaurants and tons of amenities, outdoor pool, indoor pool, tennis court, uh, croquet lawn. Um, it's a neat place. And they have mm. several boats uh, that uh, the owner takes guests out on for picnics and things like that, or to go check the lobster traps. It's a neat, neat place and uh, surrounded by fishing villages and um, you know, just really interesting sites like um, Mount St. Uh, ah, Michael's Mount, which is the kind of the sister brother to Mont Saint Michel in France. Mm -hmm. um, and the Minac Theater is on the left. And this is a theater cut into stone and just overlooking the beautiful English Channel. So uh, I'm ready to go. I know. And the gardens, the gardens in this area are not to be believed, both the public and the private gardens. And they're fascinating. And they're all within such a short drive of the hotel. So it's a, it's an area that you definitely want to spend three or four days in um, at least to really see it all. And Poldark fans, um, you know, there you go to where the mining was yes. and you uh -huh. see the mines and how deep they went and you just can't believe yeah. you, it, it's fascinating. Um, well, especially before all the modern day equipment, you know, the way right. that they did it. Oh and my it's, goodness. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's fascinating. Um, and I would definitely, if, if someone were going to pull uh, Cornwall, I would definitely have them watch Pull Dark <laughs> before. Yes so they could get a real appreciation for, for Cornwall. Um, okay, next on to three beautiful properties of ours called the Historic House Hotels. And about 10 years ago, they were given to the National Trust to preserve them and to ensure that they were there for generations to come. And every booking helps you know, build and keep that trust. So it's a, it's a really neat thing. Um, Hartwell House is just is closest to London. It's about an hour outside of London, in uh, uh, just outside of Oxford. Uh, then uh, Middlethorpe Hall is outside of York, and Bodice Gathlin Hall is up and over from Chester in Manchester, England, uh, mm -hmm. in North Wales. So um, I actually have a video that I would like to show because I think that it it, it gives you a feel for these properties. Great. And this is Hartwell House. Stunning. Mm -hmm. And they're all different, but they're all unique to their surroundings. Uh, incredibly authentic. Oops. Okay. Turn that down a little bit. And the history in each of these properties is, um, is astounding. And the staff is so well-versed. And, and they, too, just really care about your stay and they treat you like, you know, a, a family friend. Mm -hmm. um, lovely teas at each property, wonderful farm to table restaurants. My trip over there is getting longer and longer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And each of these hotels also, um, they're real destination hotels because they also have um, spas. 
uh, mm -hmm. with with beautiful indoor pools and wonderful spas. But <laughs> Bodice Gathlin, this is the property in North Wales, stunning, uh, stunningly beautiful area filled with castles and um, sheep grazing everywhere and wonderful like this 17th century garden. Um, and then Middlethorpe Hall is right outside of York, you know, a site of so much history yes. uh, and beauty. And it's such an easy walk into York. Absolutely just, uh, stunning. Yeah. I mean, there's just no other words. I just keep trying to think of a word that, that works and none of them seem good enough. <laughs> I know. And, and um, yeah, they're very, very special. And it's fun to stay at one. It's even more fun to stay, you know, at one or two or three uh, during your stay. And you just feel transported back in time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oops. Okay. So now we're going to leave ah, England. We're going, okay. we're going up to Scotland and we're going to take a look at the Torden uh, Lodge. Um, it is, um, again, another area of natural beauty that seems to be a theme as well in all of our properties. And um, the map on the left uh, was an itinerary that we put together uh, in 2019 for a couple who wanted to experience both the best of Ireland and Scotland. And they were on a self-drive and they weren't going to rush. So they had, I think, three weeks. Um, and we included the Torridon um, in that um, itinerary and they loved it. And um, what they loved most was this uh, North Coast 500 route, which is this gorgeous self-driving route and and the tourin in is is really kind of centrally located on that so they mm -hmm. stayed a few days and they were surrounded by these gorgeous you know mountains and streams and what's also really neat about the tourin in is all the activities are included in your stay so um, if you want to go mountain biking or kayaking or canoeing in the lakes, or you want to do something crazy like these people are rappelling down uh, these waterfalls, um, <laughs> you know, archery, like all sorts of very cool activities all day long led by a really passionate group of people. Um, that's what families love to do, or that's what couples love to do. And then, you know how you feel like when you've been outside all day and you come back in and the food is so good and they raise their own Highland coos. Have you ever seen the big, uh, oh, I should have put a picture in the big cows with the very long fur. Yes. Yes. And the I horns. Have. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. um, they raise their own Highland coos and they are beautiful creatures. And I don't know how ooh, they, they then make it into the kitchen, yeah, but right. <laughs> they eventually do. I would just fall in love with them. I would just yeah, be like, you're yeah. not going in there. But, um, but they, uh, they do have wonderful food and they have an enormous garden. Uh, in which they get all of their produce from. And then uh, the gentleman on the right holds his own against the best sommeliers in uh, France. And he is a Scotch master because the Torridon has over 300 types of Scotch whiskey. Oh, um, so he does wow. lots of tasting and flights and he really educates people on, um, yeah, Scotch. Great. Um, and then finally we have the beautiful Adair Manor in Ireland. And um, this is a leading Hotels of the World property. It is in Western Ireland. Uh, so let's look at a map. Um, uh, it is about two and a half hours over from Dublin. The closest airport would be Shannon. The closest village is Limerick. Um, and it, or the closest city, I should say, is Limerick. The county uh, of Adair Village is uh, the closest mm -hmm. little village. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Adair is uh, a beautiful manor. Um, this is a picture of the thatch roof homes in Adair Village. And you can kind of see Adair Manor in the distance up mm -hmm. onto the right. Yep. Yep. Um, and it, um, so that was a summer picture. This is what it looks like right now. Um, it is, um, it is a calendar house. It was originally built as a calendar house. And uh, it has 52 fireplaces. It has 365 stained glass windows. It has uh, four main turrets. It was built um, originally back in the late 1600s as a manor. So 
it's a warm, comfortable place. It's not like a drafty castle, it's a manor. Um, and they recently uh, closed for about two years and it became one of the largest renovations in Ireland's history. And they, uh, they added um, anything that was missing is now there, you know, air conditioning wow. and lifts and, and mm -hmm. uh, they went from 64 rooms to 104 rooms. And so it's really on so many people's bucket lists and it and it, for good reason. Um, it has a Tom Fazio design golf course. They'll be holding the Riders Cup in 2027. It has a La Mer Spa. There are only 11 in the world. Uh, it wow. has a wonderful uh, wine cellar and many other bars and comfy places to relax. Um, every every guest at Adair starts their day in the breakfast room, which is on the left. And it was designed after Versailles Hall of Mirrors. It's really spectacular. Um, I think it alone has seven fireplaces. Um, and then for lunch, you could do something a little more casual. Like you could go out to the carriage house that you see here and have a nice bistro lunch, uh, play a round of golf and have, or watch golf. Uh, and then in the evening, you could go into the Oak Room, which is, which is a Michelin star dining room. So they have lots of dining options for lots of different, you know, um, appetites. Um, and then the rooms themselves are just gorgeous. Like even the entry level rooms are about 500 square feet and beautiful. And then mm. they go up to well over 1500 square feet for the, for the suites. Um, all stunning. And I had to show this, I had to put this in because this is a new paddle court that, um, or paddle house that was just completed this last week. And it houses a pool. It houses some paddle tennis courses, uh, some, um, a, a golf simulator uh, and lots of like spa rooms and steam rooms and things like that. So they just added this, it's kind of in the woods. So you don't see it until it's there and it's all glass wow. and it's just beautiful. Um, mm. And then the other activities at Adair are plentiful, including over 30 birding activities alone, but lots of, you know, fishing and bow and arrow and archery, things like that. Well, oh my gosh. So yes, that's, well. yeah. So that's the UK <laughs> and Ireland, like in a snap. Yeah, around. yeah. No, it is. It is. I'm trying to get my, my mouse is not cooperating and wanting to. Let's Don't be to I stop can, sharing. Oh, yeah, go ahead and stop okay. sharing. And I think that I can do the, here we go. All right. I had to go to the, the pad on the computer okay. for some reason. My mouse is not cooperating, but that's okay. It was probably just stunned by all of that. <laughs> stunned by the beauty of these properties. Exactly. Now, I I'm certainly stunned. was. <laughs> Robin, that's why I say this is not a job. Like what mm -hmm. I do is just pure enjoyment. And yes. these properties and the people behind the properties is what make them so special and so memorable. Um, and when I get to go on, you know, when I get to take advisors um, over to see them firsthand, it's a really lovely experience. I just love oh, watching people's faces. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that we are are blessed being in the travel business too, because yeah. you know it's wonderful for me to meet people like you, and then I feel so safe when I you know, make a, get an itinerary together. And I work with somebody like you right. and you have the relationships with these hotels. I have the relationships with my clients right. and then it all comes together and it really works, you know, yes. and it's, uh, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that like to do their own thing and make their own trips and sure. that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But, um, but what I love about this, like you say, is this doesn't feel like a job because I love travel so much right. and I love people and putting it all together and you right. know, just making that magic happen. And there is a yeah. lot of magic in what you have to offer. I can tell. There is. So <laughs> there is. I, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be in England several times, but I've always been in the winter and colder and darker months. So oh. I am really, Chelsea flower show is something that is on my travel bucket list. Yeah. And I'll seeing these places and that, that, that's gonna, that's gonna creep up my list a bit. So. <laughs> yeah. Springtime. It's hard to beat springtime yeah. in, in England. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have been so wonderful and I so appreciate oh you coming on and sharing. Thank you for and, having me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like Great. I said, we'll have to, we're going to have to go back and go to a different part of the world because. Oh, uh, yes. 
the we can go to India and Sri Lanka and and Bhutan and Tibet and Nepal. Oh. We can go down to the Caribbean, we can go to Israel, we can go to Turkey, we can go to New Zealand and Australia. Lots of places to cover with Klein and Co. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I am going to say goodbye to everybody.